Hello and welcome to the Kendall MMA full car prediction and breakdown for UFC 303, Alex Pereira versus Yuri Prohaska. I'm going to go through the entire card and break down every single fight on it and give you my prediction of who I think is going to win. Now, real quick, I do have a topology group that you can join. You can submit your picks in there as well and compete against me and other people that are part of my community. In the future, once we get more members in there, I will start offering prizes. But as of right now, it's just for fun. But if you want to get in there and compete with me, go ahead and do that. But let's not waste any more time and let's get right into these full car predictions. Now, starting off, we have Ricky Simone versus Vinicius Oliveira. And when I first saw this, I thought to myself, okay, this is kind of a bad matchup for Vinicius Oliveira. His striking isn't really that crisp at all. He kind of just wing shots out there. But overall, Vinicius Oliveira does pack power. And Ricky Simone is a grappler who can be chinned. We saw him versus Song Yidong get chinned. He has not bad striking, but it's very... I would say basic striking, but his takedowns are very effective. So Simone can go out here and just out grapple Oliveira, but I'm going to take Oliveira to get this one done. I think his power is going to be enough to carry him to KO Ricky Simone. I might take him by first round KO. Ricky Simone can get this one done. This might be a bit too big of a jump up for Oliveira this early into his UFC career. I believe he already has one fight in the UFC and he's already getting a what? top 15 ranked Ricky Simone. So kind of a big jump up for Oliveira here. I think he probably can't get it done. Maybe Simone just out grapples him. He is a pretty moderate favor here, but I'm taking my first underdog of the card being the first fight in Vinicius Oliveira here. I'm taking him by first round TKO. Actually, I'm taking him by second round TKO. I think we'll find a shot eventually on the chin of Ricky Simone and put him down in TKO. Him. Now moving on up the card, we have Carlos Hernandez versus Ray. Tsuruya. He's Japanese. I might have butchered his name, but he is fighting Carlos Hernandez and he is a product of Road to UFC. Now, if you don't know my opinion on Road to UFC, a lot of these guys don't end up being that good. It was kind of a thing for the UFC just to find some Asian talent. And I don't believe they found the best Asian talent from Road to UFC. So a lot of these guys that come from Road to UFC, sorry, they are pretty underwhelming once they get into the UFC. Now, Carlos Hernandez is not a bad fighter by any means. He has good boxing skill, but I think that Ray Tsuduya is, <laughs> is, a, is a good grappler. And we have seen in Carlos Hernandez's fights, some of his worst performances are against people who do grapple. I'm going to take Ray to get this one done. I'm not saying his last name again because I'm going to butcher that. Um, by decision, most likely, it's flyweight. Flyweights don't tend to get too many finishes. But uh, I'm taking Ray here. It is what it is. Now, moving on up the card, we have Andre Arlovsky versus Martin Boudet. Now, this one, I don't really know. Andre Arlovsky has looked good, even with him being 45 years old and somewhat younger against like Jake Collier and Jared Vandera. But those are Jake Collier and v Jared Vandera, some of the worst heavyweights on the roster during that time before they got cut. Um, but after that, he's lost. He's on a three-fight losing streak to Marcos Rogero de Lima, to Dante Mays, and to Waldo Cordes Acosta. And I'm pretty sure Dante Mays carried him with a phantom punch. So it's like, how good is Andrea Lasky at this point? While well, it's Martin Bidet, I don't find him to be that good. Another pretty fat heavyweight at the same time. So it's like losing to Shamil Gaziev by KO TKO is pretty... Uh, you know what I mean? So like some of these heavyweights just don't have good wins. I'm going to take Martin Bidet. I think a 45-year-old man should not be in the UFC anymore. I think Arlovsky's time is done. He has, I think, over 50 fights in his career. He has 57 fights overall in his career. That's a lot of a lot of fights. He has 23 losses and a lot of KOs on that. So Martin, Martin Bidet, I think he can get this one done. I mean, he beat Josh Parisian. He beat Jake Collier. I mean, he... he He's not that good. Neither of these guys are that good. Again, Arlovsky is way too old to still be in the UFC, and Boudet is a fat heavyweight. So I'm going to take the one with the less damage overall in his career and I guess a similar similar level of skill. And Boudet, by decision, it, it, it's a pretty eh fight, if I'm being honest with you. But we move on up the card to Michelle Watterson Gomez versus Jillian Robertson. Now, I'm taking Jillian Robertson by submission. Uh probably by first round submission, maybe second round submission. Honestly, the grappling is going to be the big deal here. Uh, Watterson Gomez is 38 years old. 
she's not really that good anymore. Uh, Jillian Robertson was able to submit Rose Namajunas on a in a grappling match or grappling tournament. I forget which one it was, but she has good grappling. She wins most of her fights by having good grappling. And Michelle Watterson, at this point, she's 18 and 12, 38 years old on a four-fight losing streak. She has good striking, but I feel like she just screams more than she actually throws good punches and kicks. That's really about it. I, I can't really pick her for this fight. Jillian Robertson's striking isn't that good, but I think her grappling is more than enough to make up for it against Michelle Watterson. I'm taking Jillian Robertson to win this by second round submission, probably by rear naked choke. But we move on up the card. Peyton Talbot versus Giannis Gamori. Gamori, however you say his name, Peyton Talbot, easy pick, probably first round TKO. Peyton Talbot is a prospect. He is a talent. He is my lookalike brother. Kidding. No, he's not. But I, I like Peyton Talbot. He's a really, really good prospect so far in the UFC. He beat uh, Cameron Simon pretty dominantly. And Cameron Simon is no, no slouch at bantamweight. He's really, really good. And Giannis Gamori lost to William Gomez by body kick. I think that Peyton Talbot is better than William Gomez. I think he has a lot more skill. I think he's more talented. He's 25 years old. He's still very, very young. Yanis Gamori is not the, the worst fighter I've ever seen in my life, but he's 0-1 in the UFC, 29 years old, against a real prospect in Peyton Talbot, who has all of the skill in the world right now. Peyton Talbot can grapple, he can strike, he can do it all, and I think he'll find a nice shot on Giannis Gamori's chin and put him down and TKO him in the first round. Probably the easiest pick, probably the lock of the card if I'm being honest with you. But now we move on to Charles Jourdain versus Gene Silva. Now, Charles Jourdain didn't have a good performance in his last fight against Sean Woodson, but I think that was the range. I think the range of Sean Woodson made that fight difficult for Charles Jourdain, and Gene Silva is nowhere near the range or has nowhere near the range of Sean Woodson. And we've seen throughout Charles Jourdain's career, sometimes he's been disappointing. Sometimes we've thought, that, okay, Charles Jourdain might get a push now. Maybe he can get a few more wins to get into the rankings. Loses to Shane Burgos, loses to Nathaniel Woodson. Wood has a good fight with him though, but but there's just been several times in Charles Jordan's career where we finally got some hope for him that he would finally you know go on a win streak and then he ends up losing to somebody, which does suck. But he, he's good still, and I like his striking, and he's tough, and he, he's willing to push a pace and push a fight, and he, he can stay in a fight for a very long time. And I think somebody like Gene Silva, who is the same stature of Charles Jordan, will give him an easier time. Now, again, Gene Silva's tough, he has power. But I think that Charles Jordan is meant to beat guys with power. I think you have to be able to outpoint him and out technical him to win a fight over him. And I don't think Gene Silva has the, the striking skill to get one over on Charles Jordan. Maybe he can chin him, but Charles Jordan is very, very tough. I can see him surviving a tough first round versus Gene Silva and then going on to probably TKO him in the later rounds. So I probably will take Charles Jordan by third round TKO here. I think he'll survive again a very, very tough first round, but then go out there and find a way to push a hard pace on Gene Silva and land a lot of body shots, get in the phone booth and exchange with a probably tired out Gene Silva. Charles Jordan by third round TKO. Moving on to Cub Swanson versus Andre Philly. Cub Swanson's a bit too old for me now, man. I, I don't like it. Andre Philly did get KO'd out cold by Dan Ige in a very, very nasty KO. Go back and rewatch that fight. And that fight was only four months ago, so it's pretty iffy for Andre Philly here. Maybe Cub Swanson still has some power left in his hands. Maybe he can go out there and, and just touch Andre Philly's chin, and maybe he can put him down. Cub Swanson, I still think, is good, but the low kicks are kind of Cub Swanson's kryptonite right now, but Andre Philly doesn't have crazy low kicks, so maybe this is a good matchup for Cub Swanson. I don't really know, but I'm going to take Andre Philly maybe with the grappling. I think he can probably find ways to get down Cub Swanson, but I am worried when it's on the feet, maybe Cub Swanson can use his tricky, tricky, like pretty, honestly, a pretty good looking style against Andre Philly with his hands down, the way he strikes. It's it's still pretty elite for an older guy at, at featherweight of all, of, of all weight classes. But then again, Andre Philly does have a four inch reach advantage. He does carry power in his hands. You got a KO versus Lucas Almeida. Like I still think that Andre Philly can put down Cub Swanson, who is older, who is 40 years old. I'm going to take Andre Philly. He has more options in this fight. He can grapple. He can strike. He can do more than Cub Swanson right now. So I am going to take Andre Philly, but I am worried. I think Cub Swanson does still have a lot of skill at 40 years old, and he can definitely get this one done. But 
I'm not gonna predict him to do it. I'm gonna take Andre Philly by decision. But we move on to the prelim main event, Joe Pfeiffer versus Mark Andre Berriolt. Now, Joe Pfeiffer in his last fight, obviously we saw the Jack Hermanson performance. He did good in the first two rounds, but after that, he kind of gassed out and lost that fight on points. And Mark Andre Berriolt is known to be that guy who can wear you down as a fight goes on and then end up finishing you. And just, he's a very tough fighter. He usually beats guys who have power in the first round. He usually, he survives that and then goes on to beat you because you are gassing out. Now, Joe Pfeiffer, he did gas out in his last fight, but that was in a five rounder. I think Joe Pfeiffer has good enough cardio for a three rounder. So I don't really expect him to gas out too hard. And even in that Jack Hermanson fight, he wasn't really like, dying and gasping for air like he wasn't totally completely gassed out now he was gassed but he wasn't almost defenseless he like he was gassing but he could still manage a pace he could still fight he could still continue just that he couldn't do enough in the moments he needed to whereas Mark andre Berriolt, i feel like he relies on guys gassing out a bit too much like the way he beat eric anders eric anders is kind of old and phony forget about that fight but he when he beat julian marquez julian marquez had a good first round and then he gassed out when he beat jordan wright jordan wright kind of sucks so it is what it is with that fight for him to get wins it feels like he has to survive a tough first round and then go on to beat you or just as the fight goes on he goes on to beat you whereas joe pfeiffer i think is technical enough and i think his cardio is good enough in a three rounder to where there won't really be a a tough round where he's gassing out and i think he finds a way to actually ko mark andre Berriolt. i'm going by second round at tko pfeiffer does carry a lot of power in his hands we all seen that one i guess the punching bag arcade machine where he apparently beat Nganu's record. I don't know. But Joe Pfeiffer, I think, is very good. Still a prospect in my eyes. Just don't take any five-rounders for a little bit of time. So again, I'm taking Joe Pfeiffer by second round TKO. Now, before we get to the main card, I wanted to share a little bit of news with you guys. The Patreon is up. Please, please go sub to the Patreon. It allows me to provide extra content that I can't do on YouTube. So if you are interested, there's a link in the description. I'm sure it is worth your money. I'm going to be uploading almost at least a few times a week there. We have fight reviews. We have full car predictions. You get this early if you are on the Patreon. You guys can even vote on which fights that I review over on the Patreon. So go check that out for me. The link is in the description. I am sure it is worth your time to go sub to the Patreon. Moving on to the main card, the main card opener of Ian Machado Gary versus MVP. This one is actually a really, really tough fight and I can really go down into it, but I'm gonna take Ian Gary because MVP style, he can make it very, very slow. Like he can make this fight very, very boring, but so can Ian Gary. And it's just, um, you have to figure out which fighter has the better skill set and who can make it more boring, who can land the better leg kicks, who can land the better body kicks, who can outpoint the other fighter. And MVP, even though he fought at uh, Bellator and he was good, that competition is very subpar. And even though MVP did beat Kevin Holland, Kevin Holland does not care about his career. If he faces any sort of adversity, he gives up. We've seen in several Kevin Holland interviews him say, I don't even want to be champion. I'm here to get paid. He just doesn't really care about his career. So I, I like MVP's win in Kevin Holland, and you can put some stock into it, but I, I don't really put that much stock into it. And I think this is the real test for MVP if he really is UFC level. Now, Ian Gary, I know we hate him. I know we don't like Ian Gary. I know we dunk on him. I know him and his wife had this whole weird situation. I know he's a weirdo. I know he's not very funny. I know he's a wannabe Conor McGregor. I know all those things are true. However, is Ian Gary a good fighter? Yes, he is a good fighter. He has skill. He beat Jeff Neal in a very boring fight, but he beat Neil Magny. And Neil Magny, let's be real here, Neil Magny's a tough test, man, and he made him look silly. Neil Magny can beat a lot of people who are up and coming in the UFC, especially at welterweight. We've seen Neil Magny stick around for a long time now. Not a bad fighter. He even beat Jeff Neal. So Ian Gary going out there and embarrassing Neil Magny is a pretty good look on him. But the one thing I'm looking at in this fight and the one prediction that I have I think Ian Gary is going to go for a takedown. He can go for takedowns. He has a really good ground game. His striking is good, don't get me wrong, but I think if Ian Gary is smart and he was watching that Kevin Holland fight, I think he knows he can probably take this guy down. Now, both of these guys, again, have a very similar style. Maybe MVP is a bit more flashy than Ian Gary, but they both kind of have that 
tit for tat on the back foot. MVP more so has this bolt in sort of style, but when it comes to landing low kicks, it's somewhat similar. And I think they're going to be pretty much even on the feet. So I think there needs to be a takedown involved for somebody to win this fight. And I think who is more susceptible to takedowns, that is MVP. And I'm going out on a limb here. And I think we're going to see Ian Gary go for a takedown. He can shoot takedowns. He can have ground control. We've seen him fight at Cage Warriors. He's had ground control. He showed a good ground game in that promotion. And I think in the UFC so far, he is yet to show that. And I think in this fight, he will show that versus MVP. So I'm taking Ian Gary by a very boring decision where he wins based off of takedowns in every round maybe. Because again, when MVP was on the ground versus Kevin Holland, he kind of got controlled a little bit. He found some get ups, but it seemed like he's, his ground game wasn't the most elite and that he could be out grappled by somebody. I think Ian Gary can do that if he wants to do that. So I am going to take Ian Gary by decision. Moving on up the card to Myra Breno Silva versus Macy Chachon. I don't like either of these guys, honestly, or girls. Sorry, I gotta be gotta be appropriate. You know what I mean? I'm taking Myra Bueno Silva by decision. I don't know. Both of them don't really impress me. Bueno Silva lost to Raquel Pennington, but I mean Macy Chachon lost to a up kick to the liver from Irene Aldana, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, lost to Raquel Pennington as well by submission. So I think when it comes to matchup for matchup, I like Bueno Silva. She popped for Royds. Need I say more? She popped for Royds. Again, she popped for Royds. She's on gear. Um, yeah, Bueno Silva. Moving on, up the card. Anthony Smith versus Roman Delidzi. What? Now, I'm upset of the fact that Carlos Oberg is off of this card. I think he would have smoked Delidzi or smoked Anthony Smith. Sorry, that was the replacement fight. But Delidzi comes in. Both these guys are on short notice. I don't like either one. I don't like either one. I guess Anthony Smith did beat Vitor Petrino. But I think Anthony Smith has to grapple to win fights. And the way to beat Roman Delidzi is by not grappling. That's the whole thing. Lindsay cannot strike worth a damn, and so can't Anthony Smith. And I think Anthony Smith has to go for takedowns versus Lindsay to win this fight. And if he goes for takedowns, Roman Lindsay's best part of his game is his fucking jujitsu. That's his whole fucking thing. He can't strike worth a damn, but man, can this guy submit people. If when he fought, who did he fight? Jack Hermanson. If Jack Hermanson did not try to take down uh, Roman Delidzi, he would have won that fight. But instead, Delidzi gets him in this weird triangle position and then TKOs him. I just don't like Anthony Smith. And I know on paper, Smith is going to try to grapple Delidzi, is going to get submitted by Roman Delidzi. I, I, I don't care. It's going to happen. Anthony Smith, I think, is disappointing. Yeah, he beat Vitor Petrino, but Vitor Petrino's fucking dog shit lost to a guillotine. Oh my God. I don't care. This fight just really, really annoys me. I'm taking Delidzi by first round submission. I just think that Anthony Smith is going to fall into the trap that is Roman Delidzi and not just stay on the feet with him. And even if they do stay on the feet, I don't think Delidzi is that much worse than Anthony Smith when it comes to the striking. So taking Delidzi by submission, round one. Anthony Smith, retire, please. But we move on up the card. Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez. Now, this one, I don't think is as easy as people are making it seem. Brian Ortega, to me, I think it's a very bad matchup for Diego Lopez. Like we don't see Ortega ever get chinned. He's a very, very solid chin. And the best thing about Ortega is his jujitsu game. And Diego Lopez, he has power in his hands and he has a great finishing ability. But I am worried about the fact that maybe he can't find a good position to get a submission over Brian Ortega. And maybe on the feet, he can't hurt him. And yes, he can grapple. But Ortega mainly has those jujitsu takedowns where it's not very strong. It's not very athletic. He got a trip over Yair Rodriguez. And Yair turns out he has no grappling defense whatsoever. Where I think Diego Lopez does have grappling defense. So I'm going to take Diego Lopez. But I am worried about him, man. I don't think he's going to find a way to chin Ortega. So basically, what I'm basing this prediction off of is the fact that I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see Diego Lopez go out there and just beat up on Ortega for three rounds. And that's probably going to be the deal here. Because when I look at this fight, I see two guys who I think have really good jujitsu. So that cancels it out. So who has the better striking? And then I think Diego Lopez has that. Well, Ortega, he just, he just gets hit a lot. He gets hit a ton. When he first fought Yair, he was getting pieced up by Yair Rodriguez. I know it's Yair. Yair has really good striking. But I think Diego Lopez... 
Maybe it isn't as good as Jair, but he definitely carries more power. And I think if at any moment Diego Lopez does hurt Ortega, I think he does finish him because he just is that good at finishing people. But I just don't think he does hurt Ortega. So I think he just pretty much lands the better shots throughout three rounds and finds a way to get a decision and maybe he can't put out Ortega here. So again, I'm taking Diego Lopez by decision, just finding ways to land the better shots throughout three rounds. Now, moving on to the main event, finally, Alex Poetan Pajeda versus Yuri Prohaska too. Now, people are really, really confident in Poetan here, but I'm really, really worried. If you rewatch that first fight, Yuri Prohaska was getting the better of Alex Pajeda. He was winning the fight. And I don't know if Pajeda never landed that left hook or if that left hook never hurt Yuri Prohaska. I think Yuri might win that fight. And so I think Yuri has a very, very strong chance of going out there and beating Alex Pajeda. It's just back to my first point when they first fought. Yuri Prohaska gets hurt in every single fight that he fights. There's not a single fight in his UFC career where he doesn't get hurt at least one singular time. And do I think Pajeda can hurt Yuri Prohaska at least one singular time to put him out? And that is yes. I think Yuri overall has the better style to beat Alex Pajeda, that unorthodox style where the jab comes out of nowhere, where his strikes are just very unorthodox, his stance switches are very unorthodox. Yuri Prohaska is unorthodox. And I think that does give Poetan issues. It's just the fact that, that I think Yuri is just way too open and he can be hit by shots. And when you get hit clean by a Poetan left hook, you're going down. We just saw what happened to Jamal Hill. If, if Poetan can land clean on you with that left hook, it's going to rock you. It's going to drop you. And maybe that last fight was an early stoppage. I do agree, but who knows? Pajeda was in full mount. He could have just grinded and pounded Yuri Prohaska out cold. It is what it is. I don't care. Um, but at the end of the day, man, I'm just worried about what Yuri Prohaska, what punches can Yuri Prohaska take? Can he take a clean left hook? His chin, it's not a bad chin, but he does get hurt in every single fight. And I think at some point we're going to see Poetan land a good punch. And I think this fight is just going to be the repeat of the first fight. I think we're going to see maybe a slightly less aggressive Yuri Prohaska and if he's not that aggressive then I think he does lose but if he goes out there the same way he did in the last fight I do see him getting chinned I'm taking Alex Pajeda by probably by second round KO again I think it happens the same exact way but I think this time as opposed to the first fight I think this stoppage will be a little bit more clear and we'll see Yuri Prohaska really go down and really not be able to recover from getting hurt. Pajeda's on a roll right now. I think he wins. I'll do a more in-depth breakdown in another video sometime this week. But as of right now, I'm keeping it a little bit simple here for you guys. But that is it. I'm taking Alex Pajeda by second round TKO. But that is it. That is my full car prediction and breakdown for UFC 303. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Again, join the topology group if you are interested. But I'm out of here, guys.